Greetings radio people, welcome back to the shack once again. I wanted to do a fairly quick update on the directional coupler aspects of the amplifier that we've been building. In the last video I mentioned that I hadn't given that any thought at all. Well, I've given it some thought now and this is the design that I've knocked together. Now, if you look in the ARRL handbook there's plenty of great information in there about directional couplers. There's also quite a few good bits and bobs on the internet. So if you want to become the world's greatest knowledge of directional couplers there's plenty of places to go. So this over here is the port where the RF comes in. So this is the uh, port that will come from our rig or in our case from the amplifier. And this is where the antenna goes. And then down here we've got a sample here of the reflected power and a sample here of the forward power. I've also added some pads, so some attenuators. I've created 12 dB here and 36 dB here. This is because the forward RF sample will be much higher, hopefully, than the reflected because we're only ever going to use fabulous antennas and the match will always be perfect. So to talk you through this, the easiest way is probably to show you what it physically looks like. Now, I never win any awards for construction neatness that's the first thing I'll say because a lot of you will look at this and go Ugh! it's horrible but it kind of works so let's have a think about what this is so this is the RF port over here so this is our RF input this is where our antenna or our load will be connected over here this is a piece of RG I think it's 58 or something it's thin 50 ohm coax so because this is going through the center of this core, this is effectively one turn. So if you remember when we built the Bitex and we were winding inductors, we said every time the wire passes through the core, that's one turn. So this is a one turn winding on this core. And then what else we've got here is 10 turns on this core here as the secondary winding. This transformer is made using an FT5043. The 43 is the material and that's kind of the important bit. However, the FT50 was the right size to take the coax through the middle. So it all kind of worked out quite nicely. Please note for both of the lengths of coax that we've got here, one end, in this case it's this end, the braid is open. There's nothing connected to the braid here. At this end, the braid is down to ground. This transformer, one, ending, one end of the 10 turn winding is down to ground. The other end connects over here to the reflected port. This is my 12 dB pad, which is effectively presenting 50 ohms to this port here, even though it's a 56 ohm resistor. It's a 50 ohm view because of the other components in the pad. This is, a, is an identical transformer. So we've got one turn here made with the coax, no connection to the braid at this end. This end of the braid is grounded. 10 turns on an FT5043. This end of the 10 turns is grounded. The other end is connected up here to the antenna port. And this is my 36 dB pad comprising of a bunch of different resistors. I've got 200 ohms in parallel to make the 50 ohm and I've got two other resistors here to make the value that goes across the top. So that's what it physically looks like. Now if you were going to make this properly you would have a screen between this line here and this line here. You'd also have a screen coming across this way to isolate these two transformers from each other. Now when we come to look at the numbers that this is producing you'll see that what's called the directivity of my um, directional coupler so that's the isolation effectively between the reflected port and the forward port doesn't look as clever as it might be it's about 21 db and you could effectively get probably 30 to 35 db and i think i could improve this greatly by one making it a bit neater and two including some screens so if you want to make this and do a proper job of it don't do what i do and just build it properly that would be the best advice i can give you now what I then did was take the logarithmic amplifiers that we made in the last video and we calibrated and I put them on the same board as my directional coupler. So what we've got now is the output of the two attenuators feeds the two logarithmic amplifiers. The output of the logarithmic amplifiers, which is a voltage representation of the sample that it's reading, the voltage is then fed over to my blue pill STM32 board over here, which I've written some fairly quick and simple software to uh, take these samples, convert it into power, and then display the SWR. Now let's quickly go back and remind ourselves that we created this calibration spreadsheet last time. So these were a bunch of sample readings taken at 
different frequencies and different RF values through the reflected and the forward logarithmic amplifier. We plotted the values on this graph, asked Excel to add the linear trend line and display the equation. So these values here are the alpha and beta values effectively that we need to do linear interpolation of these values. So from any ADC reading we can then calculate using these values what the DBM value of the RF signal is, so any ADC reading. So it doesn't matter what the what the RF level is, we should be able to calculate what that is in DBM. So these four values that we've got from these equations here are fed into the software. Now, the calibration software I've written, this is in our, this is an Arduino uh, IDE. And all I'm doing here is basically, these are the four equation uh, values from the uh, linear interpolation, from the linear trend lines in Excel. This is the total attenuation that I've measured through the directional coupler. I then go ahead and calculate the forward DBM, reflected DBM, forward watts, reflected watts, and then go on and calculate the SWR. The way that I've set this up is I'm using what's called event-driven programming. So there's two, uh, event timers effectively. One is every 10 milliseconds we're taking a reading of the ADC values and the other is every second we're calculating the average and displaying it. So what I'm doing is I'm rattling around in a loop and effectively reading the forward and reflected power every 10 milliseconds. I'm sticking all those values in an array and then every second I'm taking the average value of the the numbers that we've got and displaying them on the serial port. So if we look at this in operation right now I've got a 12 dBm signal coming out of my signal generator. That's going down a bit of manky coax to the input port of our directional coupler and the software is taking the readings as I said it's taking a reading every 10 milliseconds it's averaging those it's then displaying the numbers. So this is the number that the analog to digital converter is actually seeing on the forward port. This is the reflected port. And then we apply those equations that we've done from the Excel shed sheet. And we can calculate that our forward power is plus 11.7 dBm. And our reflected power is minus 10.5. Now I've got a pretty good dummy load connected to the antenna port. So when I said earlier that the directivity wasn't very good, this number I would expect to be a bit lower. I would expect this to be up to another 10 dB lower really because that's only 20 something dB difference. But it could be that my dummy loads are a load of rubbish or it could be that my coax has got some hamster food in it or anything could be happening. So we don't really know but the construction of my directional coupler is not good at all. And then from the forward and reflected power, it then calculates this, the SWR. So with my dummy load attached, we've got an SWR of 1.1659, whatever it is, to 1. So that's an excellent match with very little reflected power and almost all of the forward power. And I'm quite confident that the 0 0.3 of a dB that's missing here from my signal generator is down to my coax and my connectors and all the other nonsense. So this seems to be very accurate. So as ever, if you think what I'm doing is kind of useful, please subscribe to the channel. I'd very much appreciate your support. And I promise next time we'll be building the QRP Labs 10 watt linear and gluing all the other bits that we've made together to create a finished project. See you next time.